Brad here, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment, bringing you another Skyrim video. This time it is an unmarked location near a major location that seldom is looked at or explored. And where is this location? Where is this location on the map? It is way, way east of where my current location is, and it's not the Dwarven Ruins of Mizzleshaft or whatever it is. It's actually Altifond, or Altifond, or whatever. You are dispatched here as part of the main quest to get a dragon scroll, and you end up uh, getting there through right up oh man okay you are dispatched there by Septimus when you go to him and are told about him and right near Altafond is a actually hidden location that you can explore and it leads to a really nice valley. I'll show you. I fast traveled to Altafod and just edited out the load screen. And you take a look around, you see the camp, and you see the area that if you go to Altafod, you'll ultimately have to walk down. Now, if you walk around this snowbank, uh, ice bank, or whatever, um, I'm going to switch to my Warhammer here. There we go, my Dragonbone Warhammer. And I'm going to walk around. It's not this tower, you would think, but it's not. It's actually this tower over here. And I'm going to come over to this embankment, switch the first person view so you can see it. It's right there. It's that tower. It's very innocuous. You'd overlook it. You'd think it's that tower, but it's not. It's this one. And this is the top entrance of this dungeon. It's one of my favorite dungeons. You can get a lot of dwarven scrap metal to melt down and make dwarven ingots. It's really kind of fun. So let's go down here and we'll see what this has. And it is called the, move forward here a little bit, no, backwards, and then it is the Altifat Ruined Tower. Let's enter it and find out what's inside. Immediately upon entering, you have this light, and I'm going to just take a look around here as you can tell it's a typical dwarven structure there's shelves here there's arrows there's some other junk you really don't want to grab like a dwarven cup or di dish or something this is bad scrap metal over here is a dwemer bowl I'll take that can sell that and you go around you take a look anything that is of any real value such as scrap metal here, like the solid Dwemer metal. You can melt down, turn into ingots, forge stuff, and walk around, and already there's a lot of metal around that you can recycle. And you just keep exploring decorative strut, solid metal. There's all kinds of stuff on these shelves, including arrows if you take a look and it adds up well i'll tell you what i have on the my dragon bone boots or dragon plate boots with 54,291 points of carrying capacity and you can see my sneak is really up there why did i make these boots well i use the whatever it is restoration loop and you can look it up somewhere else and it just is easier. You're not encumbered. When you go into Dwemer Runes, 
you can pick up all the scrap metal, carry it out, melt it down, and make some stuff. Now I'm going down these stairs, and you gotta be careful. There's traps all over. Like right here, you see that big chunk of decorative metal? You might be tempted to run up and grab it. Well, as soon as you enter this room, you're attacked by spider workers, which is not a big deal. They're relatively easy to dispatch with the proper weapon tree. Common gem, I usually don't grab empty soul gems. Take care of that worker here. And let's see what he has, or it has. I'll take that. Dwarven oil, garbage, garnet, or orconium ingot, or metal and move on. You gotta explore this tower because there's stuff scattered all over the place. There's the, the chests, naturally open those. There's about three or four chests you gotta look for. And this is a pretty good weapon. But you don't wanna grab the garbage. Like, well, an arrow, another arrow, but again, you don't want to grab the garbage like the gyro or the dish or the, you know, just take good stuff. And if you turn, there is the steps down, but you want to go investigate this shelf. And I'm going to kind of just stop talking now and let you experience the rest of the adventure. And I might jump in. You got some ingots here. And I'll let you know. Again, I'll jump in if something interesting happens. Okay, in this room you see a button, another button, you press it, what happens? Ah, traps. So, just uh, pick around this, and these traps, well, I'll show you later. Again, we're just going to pick around this room.
Okay, this is the hall where you see the spikes. As you notice, there's trip plates. Um, you can't trip them by hitting them. And I'm just going to step forward a little bit. There you go. You see the spikes trip. You got to be real careful and sneak around these trip plates. And then you get to these stairs. These stairs, you press that button, you open that door, and you're going to get blasted by flames. So you kind of got to say, well, the only way to get through those flames, because if you hit the button, the doors close and flames stop. Hit the button again, doors open, flames blast. You just got to run straight through. Ready, set, go. And run straight through. And you hit this button right here. That shuts the door and deactivates the flames. Now I'm going to shut up and let you guys see what this room contains. Okay, okay, this is the final level of the dungeon, and you can close the doors, you don't have to. You walk out, and a couple of dwarven spider workers attack you. No big deal. And there is a lower level entrance, and once I'm done exploring this cave, we'll leave, and I'll show you the really beautiful valley it opens into. Okay, we've reached lower level entrance and there's this little valley and you can kind of see first person view, the ruins, up there's where you'd walk in order to get into Altifad. There's just ruins and junk around. You can hear rumbling in the background of stuff falling. Um, yeah, it's outside of Altifad. Now, there's this beautiful valley over here, and you can see the entrance, the ice that has overtaken Altifad, and there's a saber-tooth cat in front of me. I'll take care of that, and we'll walk around. I'm going to show you on the map where this is located. As you can see, it is just really to the, I want to say, southwest of Altifad. And I'm going to walk around. I mean, it's really a decent looking little rune. I mean, there's nothing up here. So I'm going to walk further down the valley and point out some interesting things. Okay, just a short, short walk away, there's another pile of rubble of dwarven stuff, and you can see we're not too far away from 
the Tower of Altify. You can see it down the valley there. There's these, this other tower that has collapsed, whether the glaciers have pushed it down or it's fallen. And you just keep walking around. There's some interesting things. You kind of have to walk around, you know. There's goats. Always there's goats for some reason. But you keep heading toward this valley leads to the seashore. And there's some interesting stuff at the end of the seashore. One of the things I'm going to show you is in this valley, there is this frozen mammoth. And it's been here a really long time in order to be frozen in the ice. It looks like it either fell in and it had been hunted, but you can see arrows and other things. Maybe people have used it for target practice, or they're just pissed off at a mammoth. But it's now obviously a clear day. I mean, this is why I like Skyrim. If you just kind of explore, you find really, really interesting locations. And the it's really well detailed and rendered at times. You just got to kind of look. On the map here, this is where the... From Ultifad, it's a little northeast in the valley, and you find this frozen mammoth. Again, this is why I really enjoy Skyrim. Just a lot of details, and if you take the time to take a look around, you can see interesting things. Well, I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. As always, thanks for stopping by, and keep exploring.